In this video, we're going to be talking about fuel cells, in particular, the hydrogen-oxygen fuel cell. This is a diagram of a fuel cell. Now, you'll see something similar to this in an exam. Let's first of all go through and label all the different parts of the fuel cell. There are two electrodes, just like electrolysis. One is positive and the other is negative. However, unlike electrolysis, the names are flipped. So, in electrolysis, the positive electrode was called the anode. However, in fuel cells, the positive electrode is actually called the cathode. So make sure you remember that they're flipped. Now the reason behind that is a bit more, is a bit more technical than GCSE, so we'll leave that out for another video. Just like electrolysis, the electrodes are made of graphite, which is carbon-based. Remember, graphite has delocalized electrons, which makes it a perfect material to make electrodes out of, and the reason behind that is because it will allow it to carry a charge. The solution between the two electrodes is called an electrolyte. It contains ions such as hydrogen ions, and this will allow it to carry the charge between the electrodes and complete the circuit. Now, the electrode is usually made of a solution of acid, such as phosphoric acid or sulfuric acid. Now that we're familiar with what a fuel cell looks like, let's talk about what chemical reactions take place in the fuel cell. So, we'll start at the negative electrode. Hydrogen gas enters the fuel cell over here and comes in contact with the negative electrode. Upon contact, it breaks down into hydrogen ions and electrons. And this is the half equation that you should write down for what happens at the negative electrode. So what happens to those hydrogen ions and electrons? The electrons make their way out of the electrode and pass through a component, such as a bulb or a motor or anything that you want to power with your fuel cell. The bulb and motor take energy from the electrons and use it to work. The electrons keep travelling until they reach the positive electrode. The hydrogen ions pass through the electrolyte, again heading towards the positive electrode. At the positive electrode, oxygen enters. Oxygen enters here and comes in contact with the positive electrode. Upon contact, the oxygen molecules, electrons and hydrogen ions come in contact in a reaction that forms water. Water is then released from the fuel cell as a product of this reaction. And this is the half equation that occurs at the positive electrode. The only thing left now is to finish off by balancing it. And that is the complete half equation. Now, so now we know that a fuel cell essentially works by breaking down the hydrogen gas into hydrogen ions and electrons. The electrons pass through the circuit through a motor or a bulb and transfer energy to it. Finally, at the other end, oxygen with hydrogen ions and electrons come together in a reaction which completes the circuit and that creates water. If the supply of hydrogen or oxygen was to stop, the reactions would no longer occur and the fuel cells would no longer produce energy. Okay, so finally, they might ask you to write down what the overall equation is for the fuel cell. To answer that, we're going to look at our two half equations, and then try to combine it. So I've written out both half equations that occur at each electrode, and also balanced it. Now, to find the overall equations, we need to balance the number of electrons in both half equations. So you can see at the top there are two electrons on the right, and in the bottom one there are four electrons on the left. So, what we can do is times the top equation by two. Now this is something similar that you do in simultaneous equations in maths. Timesing it by two. Now we can cross out the reactants and products that appear on both sides of the equation. For example, we can see that on the left of the second equation, there are four hydrogens, and on the right of the first equation, there are four hydrogens. These cancel out because they are the exact same thing. Also, on the left, there are four electrons, and on the right, there are four electrons. So those also cancel out. What remains can now be added. And this is the overall equation. Okay, so let's finish off by talking about some advantages and disadvantages of using fuel cells to provide energy. So first of all, vehicles that use fuel cells will produce less pollutants such as nitrogen monoxide, sulfur dioxide and carbon dioxide. Some of these gases can produce acid rain, 
cause breathing problems and act as greenhouse gases which can cause global warming and climate change. We just saw in the previous example that fuel cells only produce water as a byproduct. Fuel cells can store more energy than batteries, which means that you don't have to recharge them as often. In fact, a fuel cell will continue to work as long as fuel is being supplied to it. Fuel cells have no recharging limit, unlike batteries. Even rechargeable batteries, although they might be rechargeable, after a while will lose their potential and you might have to throw them away, which can damage the environment. You won't have that problem with fuel cells, meaning that they can last much longer. Also, batteries contain toxic metals, which means that when you throw them away, they could potentially damage the environment. Now, although they have some advantages, they also come with a few of their own disadvantages. For example, hydrogen is a gas, and it takes up a lot of storage space. When hydrogen comes into contact with oxygen, it can be very explosive. Therefore, keeping hydrogen away from oxygen can be quite tricky, and as a result, there might be some safety problems in the fuel cell, especially if there's a gas leak. The hydrogen from the fuel cell usually comes from fossil fuels or from the electrolysis of water. This means that electricity is needed in the first place to make the fuel cell. Usually, that electricity is made from fossil fuels, so that means we still have to use a little bit of fossil fuels to get hydrogen in the first place. Hey guys! If that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing, and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, if you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com, where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.